Hey, hey there, paisanos. paisanos. Welcome, Welcome back to the to Super Mario Bros. Ramble Super Blast. Show. No, okay. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> back to Ramble Blast. And uh, episode two. Finally, we're getting around to doing this one. We actually had a recording earlier that... So we weren't, Yeah, we weren't happy with it. The mic quality was terrible. And I need to learn to lean in more so my voice is more clear. As long as I stay still like this, it'll hopefully work. I agree. Maybe just speak louder next time, idiot. How about that? So on this month's installment of Ramble Blast, we're going to be talking about Super Mario 3D World for the Wii DS. Nintendo DS. The nun... The controller. The piece of junk. <laughs> That's a YouTube poop reference. I don't even know if Noah's going to keep that in. But that'll be funny if people don't know what we're talking about. Cause so they can just be thinking we're total weirdos. Nintendo DS, the, 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 the controller, controller the, the piece of junk. junk. This Roll is a the real intro. <laughs> 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 your mouth right here <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just get straight into it super mario 3d world we'll start with the opening cutscene of the game i think that's a fair point to start of the game yeah we're just gonna go through a, a somewhat more organized list of stuff in the game just to make it feel more organized this is kind of a weird amalgamation of a podcast and a review we had one of our friends criticized it because well, I, I don't know. We're gonna we're just trying to make it more um, better, formulaic, or rather just organized. Yes. Okay. Let's start with the beginning. So the cutscene is great. It's a simple cutscene. It's not a very. The story of the game isn't. It's bare. It's just a normal Mario plot, except Peach is not the one who gets captured. Yeah. She is the first one to fall into the pipe, though. And so Mario has to go into the cave and follow her. And but uh, Bowser just kidnapped all the small ladies and never say that again. <laughs> OK, let's cut that out. So Bowser just kidnaps a bunch of these um, called the Sprixy princesses and goes into the Sprixy kingdom to. Oh, yeah. And it's funny how he like fits in the pipe. It's very this game is very cartoony and it has a nice um, style to it. Peach falls in, and then the rest of them go, and then Luigi's just reluctant. He's like, oh, come on. There's a split second where Luigi's just like, do I want to go to my mansion and just forget about them and just whatever? And, but, uh, yeah. So the cutscene, it, it looks nice, of course, as most Mario cutscenes do. It, it looks really nice. Uh, great graphics, especially for <laughs> for Wii U. This, well, this was the first 3D Mario in HD because Wii U was the first Nintendo console in HD. I mean, of course, you had new Super Mario Bros. U beforehand, but um, that the, we're not. That's a 2D Mario game, and that doesn't count. The overall look of this game is very appealing to the eyes. It's kind of cartoony, mixed in with some like realistic-looking things. I, I don't would think say. there are any realistic-looking things in this. I would say Where? So. Where would you say that? Bowser. Bowser. <laughs> yeah. No, it's mainly just cartoony, but it has it's very stylized. Yeah. The li the lighting is great. Like it have lots of things have a sort of especially specifically the characters. They have a sort of shine or sheen glow to them. Planet sheen glow. Yeah. <laughs> Most things have a shine to them. And uh what else can we talk about the presentation? I guess that well, we'll talk about the music later, but I go okay, I guess we'll move on. Uh let's talk about the controls. The movement and the overall feel of the game. Um, from my opinion, I think the controls are good. They are one of my least favorite of the 3D Mario games, but they're still they're still good. Yeah, uh, th there is no 3D Mario game that feels outright bad to control. This one would probably be like probably probably the least like fluid. Flu it's it's, it's not this. as are my least favorite. Well, well, 64 is more a lot is more fluid than this. Yeah, but like controls in, in is also like camera and whatnot. Well, the camera in this is way better though. Yeah. 
in that in the sense that you don't have to finagle it so much when you want to try and control it because you don't really control the camera in this game. I mean, you can if you're in single player, but it's it's not a huge thing to worry about. Yeah. And uh But um, yeah, but but one of the things that this game we feel is a bit weird is sometimes it's hard to tell your the perspective and hard to jump like forward and backward you can it, you can easily find yourself overshooting or undershooting things even though it doesn't feel like you should be it, yeah the perspective is just kind of weird it just feels off mainly on multiplayer I, because single player you can control the camera i think part of it is just because the camera for the most part in each level it's at a specific angle and because the angle doesn't really move all that much, it's sometimes hard to judge distances. That's my guess. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. There's probably some other complicated reason as to maybe the lighting sometimes. But yeah, it's mainly, it's a the camera angle, I would say. While I'm looking at it now, the lighting's great in the shadows and stuff. But yeah. That, but that's not, so that's probably not it. Um, Anything else you want to say about it? We could just move I on. Do, I do like the... My favorite part of the controls are the power-ups and how they work. Oh, yeah. yeah so, the the power-ups definitely uh, feel great. The cat is probably the, like... The cat and the tanuki. Tanuki is my favorite. It, it it makes up for the whole perspective thing, along with the cat, because if you overshoot or undershoot, you can just climb back up or float around, which is nice. And the, they're done very well, those um, power-ups. Yeah, they're they're great. Uh, the boomerang one is good. Is good. Is good. It, it's a little feels a little stiff at times trying to throw the boomerang, but it's good. Um, Mega mushrooms kind of pointless. Well, yeah, that's just a thing. A gimmick. That came from New Super Mario Brothers, where it was just a gimmick in only a couple levels. It's the same here, and it's just barely noticeable. The double cherry is great, where you just yeah. control a bunch of characters. If you get a whole bunch of cherries, or a bunch of Marios and or Luigi's or Toads or whatever, you can just control a whole army, and it's fun. Especially if you have Fireball, Fire Flower, and uh, just go ham on enemies. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of little things in this game I really like that you can hop, like you can hop in Koopa shells. There's the propeller like hat. There's the uh, well, the cannon hat as well. There's all, there's all, a lot, and the Goomba hat. There's a lot of neat little trinkets. Yeah, which is very nice and very charming, I would say. Yeah, some aren't used that often, but I feel like, even like for the Goomba hat, that's barely used, but it's used really well. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's used very well in one level. Uh, well, well, hold on, we'll get to the the levels in a minute, but yeah, they're for them, they're great. Is there any oh, other power up I'm missing? Coin hat. That one's pretty fun too. Oh yeah. You the, just like jump and ground pound off a high edge, and it's just, it's nice. Uh oh yeah. And then there's, I, for, I for, keep forgetting. There's the one with the light. There's a flashlight helmet. Oh yeah. That's in Those one. Are just that's in one level or two, two two levels, but they work as you expect. They're flashlights. Yeah, I think one of my favorites is hopping in the shells. That's pretty fun. I feel like there's something I'm missing. Like, is there another l weird little thing you can do? I feel like blowing like the gamepad use of it i would say oh yeah right there are so, some levels well that we'll kind of get to that when the levels well well how about we can talk about that right now sure so yeah now on to level design and every like the worlds um level design in this game is very good i would say um apart from just the very beginning where it feels really basic and simple but yeah the first world is basically your standard grass world although well, the, the thing about that is the worlds in this game the levels don't necessarily reflect the themes of the worlds, which allows for more variety, like a more more immediate variety, as opposed to like like some 2D Mario's where the themes are tied to the worlds they're in. Like levels such as like the Japanese temple, that one uh, doesn't relate to any world, but it's just it's in the sky world. It's one of my favorite levels. It's very good. But I was about to say for World One, there's the circ the first circus levels in World One, and that's not a grassland at all. And that's a great level. Yeah. It's probably been, that and the Plessy level are my favorite ones in World 1 that I'd say are like, the, the rest are, are kind of They there. feel the same, I would say. Very similar. But it's with every 2D Mario game, I would say the first world, can, or most 2D Mario games. 
the first world can kind of feel that way. Well, speaking of 2D Mario, that's well, we'll go back to the feel of the game for a quick second. This game's basically a, a 3D, 2D Mario, in the sense that sometimes it's like designed in a similar way to 2D Mario's, where it's level to level, world to world in a linear fashion, and the levels, while being 3D, are linear as well. You go from point A to point B for the most part. There are some levels that are sort of more open. It's still pretty linear though. But uh, but that's not a problem at all. No, I, I, I like it. Like because it's. That's the point of the game. Yeah, so some people, though, I know don't like the linears as much, and that's fine. It's, about, it's down to whether or not you just like the style or not. Me, I love it because Galaxy is my favorite game, and this game is... This is way more linear, though. Yeah, I would say so. It's more, way more linear than way more linear than Galaxy 1. Galaxy 2, it's kind of similar to in yeah. terms of the structure. But either way, it's, it's still... It's, I, I like it a lot. Anyway, the levels. Uh, World 1, we covered. World 2 is good level design. I think uh, one of my f my favorite worlds that have the um, best level design is World 3 and World 5, I would say. Those are my two favorites. World 6, ha though, has the, the clear pipe level with the fuzzies and then the Japanese one that's in World 6. Yeah, that's true. Then there's the whole one where you skate on shoes on snow and there's the wind guys. That's World 3. No. Um, no, the second snow level. Oh, okay. No, but, well, I mean... Pretty much all the worlds past World 1, well actually, World 2 is really good, World 3 and up are, are all fantastic. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I don't have many complaints about like any of those level designs. Just yeah. a, a little bit with 1 and 2, they sometimes can feel a little bit too too simple and too easy. But there again, there are some like really amazing levels in both of those worlds. But, but yeah, and there's also the Plessy levels, which are... When I first played the game, or rather, going back to this game, I forgot how many Plessy levels there were. I mean, there aren't that many compared to the actual levels of the game, but but there were, I thought there were only like three, but there were eh, twice that. Also, the mystery houses, those are very fun, like where you get all the green stars, those are very fun. They're like, um, they're like quick sh burst fire no like just quick. Fun, like mini game type things i would say they're all timed challenges yeah and where you have to like do a thing like kill all the enemies or like go here as fast as you can or they're very fun multiplayer because throw a you baseball can, at the star you can like race each other and just have a little tiny competition with while you're working together to beat the game it, it was it was very enjoyable playing those levels um, there's also the Captain Toad levels. Yeah, I really, I'm, for our playthrough, I'm the only one who did the Captain Toad levels, simply just because Noah didn't want to do them. Yeah. I, I was, mean, I've done most of them before, but... They're good, though. I really, yeah. I really like them. Uh, they're slower, they're puzzle-based, and they're just a, they break up the pace, which is nice. Yeah, for, for whenever you want to do them. And they have, well, each one has, like, five green stars, so they're good for getting your green star counter up, which we should probably also explain. Yeah. Um, so in each level, there's three, well, most levels at least, um, there's three green stars and one stamp you have to collect, and then the gold flagpole at the top, so you just have to reach the top of the flagpole. And it, it's very enjoyable to get the green stars, I would say, for basic, yeah. every level, it's pretty... Three's like a magic number, like, it's like the, the they're star coins from, like, the, the news recycle. But yeah, it's like the star coins from, uh... The new Super Mario Brothers games and in th 3D Land, I guess it's just the yeah. same. They're just different looking. And then the stamp. Oops, excuse me. The stamps were used for Miiverse, and uh, which was a thing when this game came out and isn't anymore. Which means you can no longer use the stamps. Now they're just collectibles. They used to have more use. That you could post them. It feels so empty, completing a level and not seeing everybody's art at the top. Yeah, which that was, was very nice. That was so fun. That was the the only good use of Miiverse. There were others, but like that's the, one of the most memorable ones for me. Uh, there was um, you could draw on the posts with all Miiverse posts, and with Mario in the Mario 3D World community, you'd use the stamps, and people could just yeah post. It was really nice, but Miiverse kind of sucked, so I don't blame <laughs> I don't blame for taking it down. It was just lackluster. I don't think it's some of the communities sucked and they just devolved into role play or whatever but Splatoon. world 2 is based on a desert uh world 3 is like ice 4 is the 
like a different kind of desert. It's like a mesa. Oh, World 4 is where they have the big savanna level. That one was really fun. They showcased that in the, like, teaser trailer, I think. Anyway, there was a yeah, this big so- savanna level, which was really fun. That was one of the more open levels. And There uh, was only, like, a two or three actual, like, open levels that they did. There was a beach one, and then there was a savanna one, and I don't know if there was a remix of one of them. Well, there was one that was, like, kind of a snowy graveyard, where uh, it was kind of open at the beginning. Where you had to, it was like a scavenger hunt to look for these key coins. Yeah, there's a uh, world five, which was well, wh- wh- where things get um, near the end of the game. There's uh, there's world the ca- world castle, which is this lava castly world in which most of the levels actually do fit the theme there. Yeah, where things are very lava-y and castly, which is cool. Some circus as well. Right, but and then you um. You beat Bowser again, and it's like, oh, you beat the game, you rescued all the princesses. And then... No. Oh, no, I won't put that in. I will. Okay, darn it. Um, but, uh, but it's like, nope, you don't... He steals them all again and puts them all in the same jar. And then you move on to the real, well, final world. The real final main world. World Bowser, which is super good. Yes, that was one. I think that's one of my favorite worlds. It's decently difficult. I wouldn't say hard, but it has a good level of difficulty. Um, the levels are very well done. They're super enjoyable to play, and there's a lot of like new concepts they add in there. I would say. But yeah, they do add some really cool stuff where they combine the gimmicks and stuff. And one thing I like to point out in World Bowser is that it feels very. It feels like it builds up in a good way. I don't know how else to explain it, but as you get closer to like the final level, you just, I don't know, at least for me, it feels like it like builds up in a nice way. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And then builds up into the final boss battle, which was... Well, before that, there's the, the, you fight some older bosses again, which were like... Yeah. Oh yeah, those were really cool. The, the Histocrats and then the Motley boss blob. But I think I love the Motley boss guy. He was one of my favorites. He was the more difficult one. Yeah, where he's like, uh, nom, 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 and then, Mwah, and so I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> the final level, though, is awesome. It's not amazingly difficult, but it's uh, super cool. It involves uh, well, first you get the establishing shot over like Bowser's like tower or whatever. Yeah, you hop in that uh, uh, sky lift. Yeah, the lift uh, that goes down, and you get a whole panorama view of the Bowser's castle. It's not a castle; it's a t- it's a skyscraper. Ta- oh yeah. And then um, Bowser's Empire State Building. And then Bowser appears, and he eats a bell, which would have been horrible to chew on, might I add? Cause come on. This game sucks. It's not realistic. Oh wait, he doesn't eat it. He just puts it on his neck, and oh, then he and then he becomes Meowser. In a, in a that's what knocks the game to like an eight out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Meowser pun. But oh, it looks ve- this level looks very pretty with the rain along with the ambient lights from the building, and then there's a as you climb up this building. Cat Bowser's chasing you, crawling out, and then there's more Cat Bowser's. He, he, like, eats a cherry, and then, yeah, more of them appear. Most of the final boss battle is you dodging his attacks, which some might say, that's, like, not a real boss battle, but it's, what, if, whether or not that's, like, a battle or not, it's very climactic. Yes, it's very and suspenseful. Yeah. Because it's an auto-scroller as well, so you have to take your time a little bit. But yeah, it's not terribly difficult, but it's it feels a, good to play. Yeah, it's very and exp- fun. And experience. And once you reach uh, the top, as you get closer to the top, uh, oh yeah, you ride the pipe, and then it's like it becomes very cinematic at times. Yeah, and then you burst through the clouds, and then there's Bow- Meowser um, climbing oh. up, and then he, then he eats the cherry. I think, yeah, this is where the cherry comes in. There's more of like halfway through. Oh yeah, there's like multiple like sections. 
Yeah, yeah. This this level was one of my favorites. It's super fun. But yeah, Bowser start popping out of the walls everywhere, and like some some circus stuff come back, like the trapeze, and. Uh... Um. But yeah, you start climbing up the stairs, and then more of the meowsers start coming up, chasing you. Oh, and this is where like the final stretch, climbing up the stairs. We're watching this right now. Yeah, the final stretch. You got three or four meowsers. I I don't even know at this point. Um, but then you get to the top to this giant pow, and then they dead. It's it's almost like Donkey Kong. It's like a homage to Donkey Kong in a weird way. Where he like hits the the pow block a few times to knock him down. Knock him up. Knock him up. Knock him down. And it's like Arrgh! that's my Bowser impression. It was very good, wasn't it? It was amazing. And that's it. That's all of the levels. Oh, we're forgetting three worlds. Oh, four. Four, <laughs> four worlds. Four well, it's, it's like three and a half. Actually, it's not even a half. It's three worlds and then a final, like, a few final challenges. So after... Well, well first of all, it ends great. There's the um, whole credits thing where it's just like... There's like there's no dialogue at all. Even, no. in, like, even in other Mario games, there's like other stuff but it's like it's very simple but it's very enjoyable and it's like dun, 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 and it's this <sighs> very uh big band thing and then they're like going through the pipe back to there yeah i love the clear pipe that they like the whole style of that that they use throughout the whole level dur- or throughout the game during the cutscenes um but yeah after the credits you um see that back at world one there is a rocket ship to go to World Star. And that's a fun world. That's a great world. World Star is just a bunch of new levels with a bunch that are just harder. And you're um, by the second or is it second level? You're introduced with a new character. Yes, th- this if you the second level is called Super Galaxy. Literally. Yeah, and the music is uh, Gusty Garden remix, right? E- Actually, the music for Super Galaxy, I think, is, um, no, this, uh, the music for Super Galaxy is, uh, a different track, but there is a Gusty Garden Galaxy remix in this game. It just doesn't, it just plays on a different level. But yeah, um, you, you're introduced to, like, the, what are they called? Octumbas. Yeah, the Octumbas, um, from Mario Galaxy as an enemy. And, and then uh, once you complete the, you, you can see the Comet Observatory in the back, but and then once you complete the level, you unlock the fifth playable character. Which is... Waluigi. <laughs> yeah! No, it was, uh... Rosalina. Which is a great... I think she basically was... Basically Waluigi. Yeah, basically. I'm same. kidding. If Waluigi was a woman, Rosalina. Yeah, never mind. So, you unlock Rosalina. Oh yeah, we should probably let people know that you can play as Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach. As, in case yeah. you couldn't already, in case you didn't know that. And each of them are different. Mario's normal, Luigi is a little more slippery but jumps higher. Toad is speedy, but kind of kind of not jump that high. And then Peach, for the, she... Uh, for the most part, Toad's honestly the worst character. But he's really fast. He's yeah, really he, fast. he works in some levels, but in, in a lot of levels where you have to jump high a lot. Yeah. Peach is great for those levels because she, if you, you can just float if you hold jump in the air, which is really, really helpful. Like I, like what we said earlier with the perspective issue, that just fixes it because it, you can see you overshot and just like correct for like the split second you have. It's like Galaxy's um, spin, which nope, is... Nope, that's Rosalina. Crap. <laughs> I, I, Rosalina I wasn't, has I wasn't, the... I wasn't listening to you properly. <laughs> Rosalina has the spin that makes you go double like a jump. second jump and hit enemies with it, which is very helpful and very fun uh, to play. But she's kind of slow, which is a little bit annoying. But yeah, once you beat World uh, Star, uh, you're introduced to World Flower. N- no. Crown. No, Mushroom. Mushroom. <laughs> it's World Mushroom, which which World Mushroom and Flower are basically... Basically, you have the same concepts where they take old levels and remix them to make them harder, and they're and they're all really good. Yeah, it's very fun. A lot of them they take, uh, they just make them faster. They make like um, some of them hundred seconds. Yeah, they take some of them and do that. But I remember one there was like it's a remix of a previous jungle level. They just make it darker and you have to use the flashlights. 
Oh, and um, one of the beat block ones, they just made it really fast, and that was a really hard level to do. Double time, say. basically. Yeah. Oh, and there was one level I love. Um, I forget which world it's in. I think it's in World... I think it's in World Star, actually, previously. The one where you chase the flagpole. Yeah, that one's really fun. Where is that? I want to find that. Okay. Here it is. Yeah, where you chase the flagpole, it's very fun. It, it's very intense at it, some points. It's like a cool, um, like, little subversion. Yeah. Anyway, back to World Flower and Mushroom and Flower, the remix levels. There's two full worlds of them. And uh, some of them were pretty hard, especially toward the end of World Flower. And then... World die world uh crown which we will get to later let's talk about the multiplayer and the single player multiplayer in this game is very good it's very fun it's very easy to just play with a whole bunch of people some levels can be easier some of them can be harder and just more chaotic but in general it's a very good multiplayer experience it's like playing new super mario u or new super mario bros wii um, with a bunch of people. But it feels better. It feels better than that because it's 3D and there's more room yeah. to move, I feel like. more, Less room for error, except in the later levels where multiplayer gets kind of annoying because there are tighter jumps and smaller platforms, etc. Mainly the beat block one was very hard with two players. Yeah, and me and I just played with two people. Four players, I would assume... <laughs> Terrible. With some of those... Or the ones where you, like, jump and the platforms flip over. That would be terrible oh, with four players. Well, that was ter That one was one of the worst <laughs> multiplayer. I know. We just ended up carrying each other while and doing it like basically single player. But uh, single player is really good as well, mainly for the fact that you can adjust the camera and you don't have to worry about anyone else. Yeah. But yeah, I say adjusting the camera is very helpful in single player, especially towards the last levels, where it makes jumps a lot easier and yeah. less issues. Um, that's it for the multiplayer and single player. They're both good. Multiplayer is very fun um, for... Uh... Man, my arm's itchy. That's great. My arm is very... Listen to this. That's how hard I'm scratching right Listen now. Listen to this. I doubt you could hear that. <laughs> um, um, let's move we... on to the next point. OST. Or the score. Or the... Music. Music. Muzak. It's just elevator Absolutely. music. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just elevator music the entire time. It sounds like... Uh, it's just one track throughout the whole game. It's Anubis 2 all over <laughs> <Yeah>. again. <laughs> no, but um, honestly, the music in this game is fantastic. It's, it's up there with like for the 3D. All 3D Mario games have a really amazing. Pe well, here, the thing soundtracks. Of, people forget forget about 3D World's music a lot, despite it now being in Mario Maker 2. But like, it's very. It, it's similar to Galaxy in a lot of way, with it um, being um, orchestral. There's a lot of orchestra and just some... It's kind of groovy at some points as well. Oh, yeah. They use um, a lot of its big band. Like, it's less grand with, like, a grand-scale orchestra thing and more of a big band. There's some... Not jazz. You like jazz? <laughs> no, it, too bad, because it's not here. But there's... Um, uh, I'll play some... Well, you'll, you've probably been listening to some of the music throughout this whole thing. Yeah. But... Oh, some of your favorites. Go. Uh, eh, wrong answer. Bowser's Not even Highway close. Showdown, right Ed, there. Bowser's Allan Highway. Shush. <laughs> Bowser, Bowser's Highway Showdown is a great. That like, one's great. That's a. That's just a like a rock. Conk Door Canyon. That one's good. I like that one. It's very. It fits the mood of the level well. This is also what they do really well with the levels. Yeah. I mean, I'll, honestly, Conk Door Canyon is probably one of my least. But it's it's not it's good. Double, Double cherry, pass cherry Pass is iconic. I love that one so much. Um, um, Bullet Bill Brigade. That yeah, that one's great. really good. I really, I love the Snowball Park is so good. Snowball f Park. <laughs> Snowball Park sounds like um, like some old classic movie. Yeah. Histocrat is so. Whoops. I moved the mic. Hist you go Histocrat is the jazz one. Histocrat yeah, that is one very is jazzy. So good. That one's one of my favorites. I would say. But yeah, mo I love all the music in this. But this, this is game. the but this one I was talking about um Bullet Bill the Bullet Express. Bill Express and it's actually in Mario Maker 2. But uh Bullet Bill Express is really good. That one feels like a I, I I don't I'm hesitant to say Pixar movie because I don't know that's not what I'm trying to say. It sounds like I don't know, just a movie. 
It's like, it's so, it's like very cinematic, I feel. I, yeah, and all of the, they do a very good job with fitting the theme of the level in the world with the music. Yeah. Oh, beat block Skyway, yeah, the beat block, beat block, the beat block levels have really good music as well. Yeah. Sunshine Seaside, that's a really good track, the, the, yeah. be, the beach one. That the, was one of my favorites. The, however, if you've heard the one from Mario 3D Land, though, that one absolutely oh, that one takes is, that, the cake. That, like, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the soundtrack in that game. It's okay. It's I'm, nothing memorable. I Except heard... for that song, It ma- it's so good it makes up for the rest of it being mediocre. I haven't heard a lot of the 3D Land soundtrack, honestly. I think that's it for music. Sprawling Savannah. Well, we can... We're just going to go through all the songs we like. Well, there was, I was going to mention the Ghost House music. The, oh. the, the what's it called? Shifty Boo Manor? Shifty something. Slim sh- sl- sl- Forget it. Um, <laughs> hands on Hall. That's the Japanese one. Uh, the Fort, the La- the Fort Fire, no. The, sim- the Simmering Lava Lake level and like some of the lava levels uh, music gives us PS. PTSD. <laughs> PSD. <laughs> PSD. PTSD flashbacks. Footlight Lane, Rainbow Run, Sea Lock Man. Oh, and then there's this last one, which we will get to, which is from a level we oh, will get to. Champions Road. That's uh, that's actually our next topic. Perfect segue. Okay. The last. The last level. world. World. We didn't go. The, uh, is that's not the name of the last world. The last world is called World Crown, and it's three levels. Uh, Four if you count the Sprixie yeah. house. It's a uh, Toad house. Uh, okay, sorry. A Captain Toad level. Um, the Mystery house. The Mystery house it was so fun. It was like 20 stars in that it, one. It's 20 challenges, and if you know the hit Mystery houses, then you know the how. And the thing about the Mystery houses is that you have to do it all in one go to get every single green star there. And so I think we failed near the end one time. I know. But it, I, it's, it doesn't even matter. It's so much fun to go through them. I was like, I want to do it again anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I love I love that mystery house. Uh, that one was really fun. And then you get to the actual level, Champion's Road, which is unbeatable. Yeah. No one's ever beaten it. It's a shame. End of the review. <laughs> Goodbye. No, but... Insert it's... Anubis 2 music here. <laughs> oh, no. As a fake ending. But it's it's a really hard level. We have not beaten it yet. It is extremely hard. It, it's it's so weird for just like that big jump in difficulty. For as hard as even some of the levels before it get, because some of the ones before it are hard. But this one, even from that, makes a big jump in difficulty. Yeah. Which is good, but you you absolutely cannot do this level multiplayer. Oh, you bet you can, but it's very hard. You can, but we cannot. I guess we're just gonna watch. It. We'll watch someone else do it. It is. It starts off with like the Octumbas shooting at you, and then there's like the, um, the moving platforms. It. It looks like rock candy, actually. I think yeah. One of the hard parts, because oh, there's yeah. a lot of tight jumps you have to make in this level, and that's hard to make. Um, just in this game, is oh. tight jumps. I feel like are hard. The mainly the beat block part was so hard. This guy's doing it so well, but we could barely get it past the beat block every time. It was just so annoying. And I think the farthest we got was just past these, uh... Witches of... Kamex. Wherever place. <laughs> Kamex. No, we got pa- We got to this part. We yeah. got back to... Got to this the... This part was easy. The swinging, um, spike of Roonies. But yeah, there's no checkpoint. But I think, uh, the real kicker of this level is that, one, it's hard... And two, you have to beat it with every single character to, uh, to actually beat it, beat it, which is kind of annoying. Well, that's part of what um, is the 100 percenting of this game. You, you actually don't have to beat this level with every character to beat this level. I mean, you. the thing is, you have to beat every level with every character to get 100 percent in this game, which we haven't done. Yeah. And we're probably not going <laughs> to do. We're not going to do. It, that just it's, it's like a Donkey Kong 64 type thing, but a little bit better. It's not... I don't feel like it's as stupid as the way Donkey Kong 64 did it, but it's almost as tedious if you think yeah. about it. Because you have to... Well, here's the thing. If, if you want to be realistic, you, can, you only have to beat every level twice. Because you can just summon other players if you have the, a, a certain amount of controllers. Every level three times. Two. Oh yeah, if you go through it the first time. 
if you go through it the first time with four characters, and then the second time with the other character. Yeah. But still, <laughs> you could, you're so, playing through the entire game twice. It's a hard. There's no checkpoints. You have to do it all first try. It's really there's long no power too. Ups. It's pretty long too. It's kind of like the perfect run from Galaxy Two, which. The perfect run looks honestly easier than this. I've gotten like a good ways through the perfect run. But then again, I'm just good at Galaxy. And Galaxy, I feel, is a little better to control anyway, so. Yeah. With the finicky controls that this game kind of has with the weird perspectives, it, this level is very it's, hard. It's not finicky, it's stiff. Yeah, well, the finicky. Whatever. But at the end, it, there's the clear tube thank you. Thank you so much for playing my game. Oh, yeah, that's... That's pretty cool. That's so good. But it's so hard. He that, made it look so easy. That's very, very That's hard. very honestly very reminiscent of um, Mario World. If you've ever seen the end of that, on the very last level, it says in coins, you are a super player. And it kind of does the same thing here. Oh, and at the end, you get to meet everybody again, or you get to see everybody again. That's very nice. That's a, that's a good ending, I would say, to that level, but and then there's it's hard. The, there's the stamp just at the end. Um, and I'm not. Here's the thing. I don't think 100% actually gets you anything. I think it's just for brown brownie points. I, I was I was about Braggy to bragging rights. Brag brag rights. Bragging rights. Seeing the clear pipe, man. Yeah. Uh, in this in this video we were watching, um, they were, they had the me verse things up, so. Uh, I think that's it. We don't 100%ing really have... is a bit whack in this game, but... Otherwise, it's fantastic. Yeah. I don't know what else to... Final thoughts. This game is really good. It was... It's kind of... I would say... I wouldn't say underrated. It's just not enough people played this game. And I not hope... enough people owned a Wii U. <laughs> I hope it does come to Switch so people can play it. So people yeah. who haven't played it can play it. Listen to the amazing music. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, they brought Captain Toad. Yeah, they made that into a whole game. And that game's good. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it just takes the form... Captain Toad takes the form of the Captain Toad levels from 3D World and just expands on those, and those are all super good. But that's... We're not talking about that game right now, because we're talking about 3D World. For Anubis, <laughs> it was one out of ten <laughs> one barrels. One out of ten barrels. On um, this one, I would say 9 out of 10 barrels for me. I would, yeah, I would honestly say that too. 9 out of 10 barrels. And I don't think it's nostalgia either, because I, I, we did love it when we were sort of growing up. And then... Uh, 2014 and is then, when it came out. But we replayed it recently. It's still very good. I was, Yeah, 9 out of 10. Great game, would recommend. Definitely check out the music, uh, the soundtrack of this game. And play it if it comes to Switch. If you have a switch, it is it'll be worth it. I think that's all. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Thank you, beautiful boys, for watching. I feel, yeah, I'm just afraid we weren't as funny this time, but I guess that's fine considering this was this was a very good game. I mean, we weren't that funny the first one either. Nah, but uh, I'm always just if you have any feedback for our podcast or any games you want to see us play leave it in the comments yeah we will get around to it we have like i think a few videos planned and now that we actually got the mic set up for like a good mic we'll... so hopefully the sound quality is better yeah i'm sorry I, I, I might have kept moving backwards too much on the mic but i'm i'm trying to i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying to stay close to it i hate you <laughs> but yeah thanks for watching Check out the Anubis 2 podcast episode. It was a little bit scuffed, but it was okay. Um, scuffed? Mm hmm Like soccer shoes? Nope. What? <laughs> what? No. So soccer, soccer, S cleats, cleats don't... <laughs> cleats don't get scuffed, do they? I don't... I don't know what you... No, what I'm was... thinking of dress shoes. They can get scuffed. I don't know why you thought it was soccer shoes. Whatever. Next Bye. Next time, <laughs> next time we're going to review FIFA... FIFA 13 returns for Wii DS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They always ask, wait.
Gay Luigi? <laughs> I say no. <laughs> I am squeegee. You won't. <laughs> <laughs>